Hello, welcome to another episode of Blackboard Rants. I'm Tyler. And I'm John. And today we we got some pretty good stuff for you. The first thing we're going to start off with is the inevitable Indiana Jones part. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do it here? Make, you making me do it right away? Well, we, what? What? we do it first. <sighs> we do it first. See what happens when I try getting out of it, yeah. people? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so today he pre-poured the shots because... Um, it had one of those little doohickeys to make it so that you don't get yeah. too much hot sauce. But yeah. since we're going for a full shot and we didn't want to take up all your time, uh, we pre poured the shots today yep. with uh, Louisiana hot sauce. It says, The perfect hot sauce. One drop does it. So a shot should do very well then. <sighs> yeah. And here we go. Let's see, let's see how long we last. More of the vinegar taste again. Yep. Like with the Texas Pete. I think it's got a little bit more uh, heat than the Texas Pete did. Oh, yeah. I think it's got more of a sweet flavor, too. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Yep. wow. You can feel that one in your stomach, too. Mm hmm Now, remember, these weren't uh, designed to be taken as shots, so. Right. But just for your entertainment, we do it anyway. For you, Internet, we do it. Right. And to torture him. Because uh, I certainly like it a lot more than he does. Oh, yeah. So okay, I, now you can go into our first topic. Oh, okay. Now, again, a first thing is the inevitable Indiana Jones reboot. And there's been rumors going around that Disney's been eyeing up Chris Pratt to do this. Which, I am a uh, pro Chris Pratt kind of steer because of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And so, but one of the latest rumors now is... If the script is good enough, Steven Spielberg wants to direct it. So, John, what are you thinking of this? Steven Spielberg directed uh, the last one, which was pretty good. The Last Crusade, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, uh, there's there's nothing about uh, Crystal Skulls or, or nothing. What's that? Oh, you mean that weird movie that Harrison Ford did where he got blown up in a fridge? Something like that, and he dealt with aliens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure glad they stopped making an Indiana Jones after the Last Crusade, though. <laughs> um, if they're going to reboot this, I, I Spielberg is just like George Lucas. He shouldn't be anywhere near it. Yeah. Uh, because they both kind of lost sight of what the character is. Right. And anyway, I'm in the camp that don't reboot it. Do a spinoff somehow. Right. You know, you, you have uh, Indiana's cousin... Uh, Iowa. Iowa Jones. Iowa Jones. But you know what, though? As much as I like Chris Pratt, I, I'm really, really hoping that they don't have him be Indiana Jones. And all the way to, I guess, make it make sense in my mind is going off of the true of the uh, last Indiana Jones one is with the Crystal Skulls or whatever you want to call that with uh, Shia LaBeouf's... Uh, a role as him being his son or, like you said, a cousin or something. As much as I like Chris Pratt, I really hope that they don't cast him as, like, a middle-aged uh, Indiana Jones thing or whatever. But I really I really hope they don't do that. If they could get somebody who looks like Harrison Ford and sounds like Harrison Ford and do other adventures as Indiana Jones, like the video games do, that would be fine with me, but they can't find anybody like that because he doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, Chris Pratt, uh, he doesn't have the hardness that I've seen to play Indiana Jones, because that's the thing. Jones, it's it's funny movies, but he he's uh, a hard guy. Right. You know, and Chris Pratt really doesn't, hasn't shown us that. Right. Yet. But Yet. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely see. And uh, if any of you Spielberg fans, he's working on a few more stuff. Um, he's working on a nonfiction uh, film about PTSD, and uh, he's moving into production on a film called the uh, BFG. So, yeah. In other news, um, Spider-Man obviously moved into the MCU, and obviously Andrew Garfield isn't coming back to reprise his role as Peter Parker. <coughs> and 
it has been said by uh, either Sony or Marvel that Peter Parker will return, but now there's some more rumors going around that they're going to be changing the the uh, ethnicity of Peter Parker, which will be making him uh, African American. But then who are then you have all the hardcore Spider Man fans coming around saying. Well, it sh- they should go off of the ultimate Spider-Man uh, storyline, which would be Miles Morales. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Yeah, but they, they were going off the ultimate uh, Spider-Man with what Sony was doing. A lot of that was based on the ultimate Spider-Man comic books. Uh, not not the current ones with Miles, but earlier ones. And I'm sorry to say it, Nobody outside of geeks knows who Miles Morales is. Right. I haven't even actually read a Miles book because we've talked about how hard it is to get books here. Right. Especially when you're poor. Uh, <laughs> and you have no other places that sells, that sells books. Yeah. You can't afford to buy stuff off Amazon. Right. Because um, you don't even have a bank card. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, and so the, Marvel's not going to do that. They're going to go with what the public remembers. Uh, I mean, they could have done a ton of different things with the different characters that they introduced, but they went with the most well-known versions of them. Right. And that's what they're going to keep doing. Right. Because that's where the money is. Yeah. The only one that they're going to change is uh, Captain Marvel, who she was Miss Marvel, and now she's Captain Marvel. Yeah. And most people who were in the comics and aren't now... Know her as Miss Marvel, but they're going to call her Captain Marvel anyway because she is now. But right, that's about it. That's going to change, I think. Right, and uh, that's as as much as we know about the Spider about Spider Man. All <coughs> we can do is just wait for him to come in, which come into one of the movies, which is speculated right now is going to be Captain America: Civil War. So we'll see what happens, and we'll definitely update you guys. And um, who are the people that you got listed that the rumors are saying might? Oh yes, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. Um, one of them is uh, his name is Dylan O'Brien, which I believe he is off that new movie, well, new er movie, um, The Maze Runner, which I haven't seen yet, so I haven't really got the chance to see his acting. And uh, the other one, it would be Logan Lerman. He played on those uh, Percy Jackson movies, um, and he was also on a show movie, not show. Uh, a movie called uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower or whatever. Oh, that yeah. was. Um, I really don't know if he could have the chops to play Peter Parker. I mean, I guess because if you know the story of Percy Jackson, that's kind of like a Peter Parker-esque type of character. But otherwise, I really don't know because Sony is trying to aim for a uh, younger uh, actor to play Spider-Man now, but um, like I said, we'll see. Yeah, um, I haven't seen him in anything since uh, he did the first Percy Jackson. I haven't seen the second one. Right. Um, so I don't really know what he looks like today or what he's doing today or how he acts today. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, and uh, next thing, the uh, internet kind of exploded with this, and... Uh, I believe it was on. I believe it was on Tuesday or Wednesday. Sorry, I got a bit of a cough. All right. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Uh, yeah. So the a fifteen minute short film by uh, I know I, I know I'm gonna purchase this guy's first name is uh, Audi Shanker. He is a producer for Dread, and uh, the and a director uh, Joseph Kahn released a short film called Power slash rangers and it's a darker version of a uh, of a silly weird odd kind of bad acting series and uh they put like a really dark twist to it and i like it a lot me and you just watch it yep. and for me i always i always wondered what this series would be like if you added if you had added a twist to it specifically a darker twist like what this short film is and I always had that saying in mind of, you could polish a turd, but it's still a turd. And I think he somehow polished it into something else. Um, well, I, I didn't care for the gratuitous violence in it just because of what it was based off of. Um, I would have liked to see more martial arts than 
the amount of guns that they had, right. uh, just because it was a martial arts show. Right. And then two, I watched Power Rangers when I was uh, maybe ten or so. Right. It was the last time I did it, so twenty years ago. And then you watched it when you were younger, because you're younger than me. Um, <laughs> Don't but, get it. But we were both confused about James Vanderbeek's role because right. he didn't play one of the Originals. original ones, but then they didn't really explain what he was doing there then and right. who he was. Right. And for some of you who go who do go and watch this, James Vanderbeek plays the second Red Ranger. Who was named Rocky, and in the story he goes. Who wasn't there last time right. I watched Power Rangers? And so. he he goes off into the machine side. So if you get confused with it being like a Terminator type of vibe when they call it, when they say the machines, then I definitely want to blame you. But the uh, the whole the whole gist of the show is uh, Katie Sackoff, who was also in here, who was from the new the new Riddick movie, yeah. plays the Pink Ranger. And, she and gets, of course she was on. Um, Battlestar Galactica is what most people will know her from. Right, and she was in a movie called uh, Oculus or whatever. Okay, we don't have to list her whole filmography. I was just saying more people would know her from that. Let's do it. Let's do it. I don't know it. Next one. I don't know. Next one. That's all I know about Next one. I don't know. Anyways. I don't know. Anyways, her character gets captured, and they're trying to lure her in one of the leaders of the Power Rangers because he's leading the Resistance. And apparently that's a problem for James Vanderbeek. She's the Pink Ranger. What? And apparently it's a problem for James Van Der Beek's character, so... With his robot leg. This is awesome robot I, leg. I, I, They had some good production value with the special effects and everything. Right. Um, I didn't care for when they actually showed the giant robots. I thought they looked too Transformer-ish. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, that, that that, that. it's a short film, and that's... Not that you say that. You know, it, kind of like a Voltron, Gundam type of thing. But, but they, they made it too messy like the transformers where you know the power rangers and voltron and the original transformers were you know had shapes right. they weren't just metal parts stuck together right. which the new transformers movies have and that's kind of what it looked like in the few short shots you got of right. what the zords were supposed to be um right so so that and then the gratuitous violence and then like i said uh that power rangers wasn't really a huge thing for me i watched it when i was younger but it, right. it was when i was getting older now voltron that's the big one for me uh we had it on beta beta we watched the beta cassettes of voltron and we only had like six episodes and we watched them over and over and over again and i got so excited one day when i found a new tape at a, a bargain store in a bargain bin that was on beta and i'm like yeah and this was like three years after it had been off the air. And and so I love Voltron. We had the Voltron. There were uh, five lions and there were five kids in my family. Oh, okay. So we each got a lion because one kid couldn't have the whole Voltron set. So, right. Uh, and then, but then my oldest sister, she didn't really want to play with one. So then one of us always got two, even though it was supposed right. to be one for each kid. <laughs> um, and... When I got older, I went and bought every episode on DVD in the collector's tin with the lion heads on each one, and I've watched them all, and I don't regret it. So that's a lot bigger for me, and I showed you then a short film. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. With um, uh, some, Timothy Olmanson, who was on, uh, he was on Psych, and he was on Deadwood for a little bit, and now he was on uh, the show, uh, I just told you, Gallivant on ABC. Um, he was playing the pilot of the Red Lion, being uh, drifting through space and dying after a battle where apparently everybody else from Voltron Force was dead. Uh, it's called Voltron The End, I believe. And so that one got me more excited, even though it wasn't... There's no action in it. It's right. a real dramatic piece. But that got me more excited just because I prefer Voltron over over Power Rangers. Right, right. And uh, in other news, to finish this off, uh, I guess the production company, Saban, and now Lionsgate, who's uh, pretty much funding the big budget film that's going to be coming out, I guess, which I really don't care about. 
Um, I guess they're trying to shut down on the internet and whatnot, and uh, yeah. So those do yeah, those guys that are trying to polish a turd, but it's still going to be a turd because they're just going to keep aiming for the same target audience. That's all I have to say. It's turd. And so uh, next thing is uh, Shazam. What do we know about Shazam? Well, The Rock came out and said that it might be coming along sooner than we thought, uh, that pre-production's going very well, and it might end up being here before 2019, which was the expected year for its release, Mm -hmm. which would be very interesting to start getting some information on it, because we don't have anything but that The Rock is going to be Black Adam. Right. And uh, next scene, um, we're gonna get into the mu- dig into the music category. Uh, if anybody's a fan of uh, Mast- Mastodon, they're gonna be releasing some uh, vinyls for their uh, their first four albums since they signed on to the record company Re- Reprise, and so it's gonna be out there. And um, so, what I have to ask you is, uh, what do you prefer, uh, the vinyl, CD, or a de- or a file? I prefer to buy the CD and rip it because I've had uh, hard drives go dead before where you lose whatever media you had on there, so it's good to have the hard copy. Right. And if you have it in some account, and then I know this, I, I, just, I just found out that my PayPal account from 2002 was still active, even though I hadn't used it since about 2003. Wow. Um, and I remember the password, which was crazy. Holy crap. Because I usually don't. But for things like that, when you have to remember the password, then you lose so many things that are in. I, I've had accounts on different websites that I can't get into because I don't remember passwords. And So right. if you're waiting on, oh, well, if my computer dies, it's all in the cloud. Well, you got to remember that cloud password for the rest of your life then. Right. And that's... Believe me, after a while, it's just like, uh, what did I use 10 years ago for my password? It, all, it just all blends together. Yeah. Um, so I, I like the CDs. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't care for vinyl just because I'm really tone deaf, so I can't hear the big differences. You know, audio right. files say there's a, right. you can hear a difference. Uh, I have really bad hearing, and my ears ring constantly, and... So I, I can't hear the difference, so right. I don't care about that. All I care about is that uh, a record is a lot bigger. Right. And you have to flip it over. Um, and then you got to change the needle when the needle goes bad. So for those reasons, I just prefer a CD and a tape. You know, they sound like crap, and you got to flip them over. And so a CD is where I would have a CD and rip the files. Yep. Um, on a note with records, though, when I was a child, we had the White Album from the Beatles, and there's supposed to be backwards messages on there. So me and my brother, we went up to a room, put the record on, played it backwards, listening for messages. We didn't find anything except for the parts that you could tell were backwards, and they weren't really anything. Right. But then, just for the hell of it, we put on a Sesame Street album that was laying around, and we played that backwards, and we heard... Me? Colonel Mustard at the bus stop. Like, clear as day, you could hear that. And it makes no sense. And it wasn't, I don't think it was supposed to be there. It's just one of those things that happened. That's the only time that I've actually heard, like, a song that when it's playing forwards, you don't hear anything wrong with it. And then you play it backwards, and you actually hear words. And it was a, a sentence. Meet Colonel Mustard at the bus stop. <laughs> All you know is you gotta meet him at the bus stop. Yeah, uh, Sesame Street is Satan, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, you said you wanted to get into vinyl, but you said you've never actually played a record. No, I haven't, but the only reason why I say that is because of everything getting into the digital now. You mentioned about the cloud. And there's iTunes going on there, uh, downloading iTunes and having duplicates everywhere. I prefer the same thing as you, buying the CD and ripping the files and having that hard copy stored away. Just in case something happens to my hard drive or something happens to my computer to where I can be like, well, I got these I can rip. And so, yeah. 
And uh, while we're on the subject of music, uh, there there have been uh, a band called In Flames, which is one of my personal favorites. They've been criticized about um, changing their direction and losing some fans. And so have you ever had that problem with a musician or an artist to where they change their sound, where you kind of veered off, or they just haven't changed and you, you were like, well, I'm, I'm going out of this? Yeah, there were um, quite a few bands that I stopped listening to because they changed their style and I didn't like where they went. Um, one of the most well-known is Nickelback, who everybody hates nowadays. Uh, I had their first album. Uh, I saw them in concert right before their second album, second major release album. They had an independent album, then they had The State, uh, and then they came out with Silver Side Up, and which I didn't bother to buy after I got to listen to it. I, I did download it, though, um, just to give it a listen, and I didn't like it. Um, and then uh, there was a band called Cold, who they were they were uh, not a super heavy band, but then they started getting less heavy, and then their songs were just too melodic for me. I like heavier stuff. I'm going to be listening to uh, rock. And then there's some uh, people that have changed that I've stuck with. Uh, I, I told you before about uh, Butch Walker, who was with a band called The Marvelous Three. And, well, actually, he started out in the late 80s, early 90s in a hair band called South Gang. Uh, he wasn't the lead singer in that. He was the lead guitar. Then he was in a... I didn't listen to him then. I didn't pick up on him until Marvelous Three. And they were like a pop-punk band, and he was the lead singer. And then they broke up, and then... He went solo, and then he went back to kind of mixing that pop punk with the 80s hair metal, and that worked. And then he changed a little bit, and now he's come to be like folk music almost mm -hmm. in his style. Very slow and mellow, and I still listen to him. I'm, I like the earlier works better, but I still listen to his new yeah. stuff that's completely different. Uh he, he's uh, one of those guys that you would think would be more famous. He's written some songs that were success successful that he didn't perform. And he's had songs in movies before and everything, but he just never became that top-tier guy. He actually had uh, Matthew McConaughey in one of his music videos a couple really? of years ago. Yeah, because they're friends, I, I guess. Um, but then there's also bands that I stopped listening to because they didn't change. Mm -hmm. One was Godsmack, because I had their first album, I liked it, I saw them in concert, I liked it, then their second album came out, and it was almost the same exact album as the first one. You really couldn't tell the difference between any of the songs, and uh, then I was like, you know what, time to focus myself elsewhere. Right. So what about you? Um, one of the bands that I am currently not listening to as much right now is uh, Five Figure Death Punch. Their first couple albums I really, really liked, but then they got into the third album, which I thought, oh, okay. And then they released a double album, and then they sound like the exact same thing. And just way too much stuff. It's basically almost like a repeat of Metallica's Load and Reload. Just having too much stuff on there. And it's just like, this is totally unnecessary. And the band that I actually almost stopped listening to was Stone Sour. Because I, after their third album, uh, Audio Secrecy, was a little too slow and melodic for me. But then I thought, well... Let me give it a chance. I bought the album. Just I'm just going to keep trying to listen to it. And eventually I liked it. There's a few tunes on there that I really like. And, of course, I led into the newer album, the, the newer album uh, House of Golden Bones, that I thought is really, really great. And so, I mean, sometimes change is for the better, but then sometimes you just got to change your uh, listening uh, preferences. Yeah, you, you change over time. Uh, I was surprised. I was working on the video for my niece's dance recital and that's all the current pop music and at the same time I edit uh, Poca 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 up here 
uh, TV show about polka dancing and polka music. And it made me feel old the day I thought to myself, it's a lot easier to listen to this polka music while I'm working than to have to listen to all this pop music that these damn kids are listening to these days <laughs> while I'm trying to work. <laughs> so that made me feel old. And then at, uh, one last thing before we, this is our last yep. topic. Yep, last so topic. one last story for you young kids. Uh, we were talking about the music and the downloading yeah. of the music and Metallica. Back in the day, the first big file sharing network was Napster. Mm -hmm. And the first one of the first bands to come out against Napster was Metallica. Yeah. Saying if you we'll sue you if you have any of our studio work on there. But they said specifically that if you have bootlegs, that's okay. So I had a bootleg of King Nothing from Metallica where they actually messed up the intro, guitar intro, and had to start over again. So it wasn't a great recording. Right. And I got this letter in the mail saying, if you do not delete this recording from your computer, you're going to get sued by Metallica. And I'm like, but they specifically said if it was a bootleg, uh, it didn't matter. So I was one of those people, America, that uh, <laughs> Metallica tried to sue. Uh, I wish I had that letter. I did delete the song because, like I said, it wasn't a great quality song anyway. Right, right. And I didn't actually end up getting sued. But mm -hmm. I got the letter saying, this giant famous band wants to sue you because you listen to their music. Right. And on that note, I think we'll call it a day. Yeah, I'll call her. Good night, America. Good night.